Hi everyone, my name is Shanti Sudha Arasumilli. I'm currently in my last semester of Executive MBA filming my internship reflection video to talk about my role in the current organization, what are my critical activities and to identify and share what I have learned so far in this current program to help me in managing you know, these critical activities uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I am a clinical trial professional with um, more than six years of experience in managing um, and overseeing the cl uh, clinical trials, um, not only in the USA, but also globally, conducting, um, you know, the clinical trials in different therapeutic areas. So currently I am uh, overseeing a clinical trial, which is an oncology, um, which is very interesting. Um, to talk about my day-to-day uh, -day activities or critical activities at work, um, as a clinical trial manager, I work very closely with uh, my associate director and I'm responsible for managing all of the clinical aspects of the study right from the study startup until it gets marketed um, in the market for the, uh, for the people. Um, so right from managing all of the clinical aspects of the study, from establishing the deadlines and timelines, the major milestones, um, participating in the vendor selection, um, overseeing the different vendors, which is one of the primary responsibility for me uh, as a clinical trial manager. And you know, also reviewing vendor reports, budgets, uh, metrics, and providing study specific therapeutic training to not only to the other doctors who are participating in the clinical trial, but also um, to the other site staff and also at an organizational level. Um, so those are all pretty much my, uh, you know, Man, uh, my day-to-day -day activities at managerial level, um, apart from you know overseeing um, other employees who reports to me. So as far as to identify and you know to to identify and share what I've learned so far um, in my program that helped me um, in managing these critical activities. You know, in this field of healthcare, I'd say strong leadership is essential. Or, you know, it's always decisions made at the top level, which can have profound impact on the uh, study populations. So I learned that certain leadership traits from the leadership and organizational course has really helped me to understand what are the best and effective, um, you know, leadership traits that uh, one needs to have as a leader, um, wh where one of them being is the mentorship, um, which is particularly important in the healthcare field. This is because, you know, many leaders are training the next generation of public health leadership. Um, other than that, the other thing that I learned is challenging the status quo um you know i believe that great leaders are not only um always thoughtful and deliberate they're also willing to step outside of their comfort zone um you know to try new things whether uh, it's testing a new process new idea or entirely a different approach so you know it always helped me in being able to be this person to you know in that leadership role as a critical um factor in whether or not an idea gets implemented but you know it's a function of whether or not they are willing to get out of their comfort zone um i learned this um after joining this course uh especially being at a managerial level um the next thing that i learned is to be able to manage really high stress situations in an industry where you know life or death situations are constant it can be difficult to think amidst of all of these stress levels. So healthcare leaders must always, you know, guide their team members um, through patient care, um, equipping them with right, uh, you know, equipment or the instruments and tools to protect the entire well-being of the patients. Um, and of course, being able to make the smart and quickest decisions at the right time because um, you know time is of essence when it comes to people's health right so with the numerous healthcare and patient regulations leaders must always quickly assess the issues and make smart uh, decisions and moves so these decisions may have um, very real impact on team members and patients also so being able to be on your feet is crucial to to actually thriving in a high-risk industry. Um, 
another thing that i can think of is the communication um you know communication is really it it really plays a major part in any of the project management stuff for leaders to be successful you know they must be able to communicate clearly and effectively um i'd say both verbally and orally as well so when it comes to the well-being of individuals um nothing must get get lost in the translations because i as a ctm i oversee clinical trials which are global level so i deal with many other countries um you know clearly this involves um you know effective communication communicate communication of patient plans whether it be you know medications finances or even the you know patient insurances um and the other thing as a leader is delegating the tasks right so for leaders to be successful they must um always know when, you know how and whom to delegate their work that way they can focus on their leadership responsibilities and provide team members with um growth opportunities as well and of course you know pro- prioritizing the tasks um you know i always believe that prioritizing requires understanding of how to delegate the tasks first right so healthcare individuals um, or the leaders must practice transparency to set the realistic and you know uh in in the sort of expectations and deadlines for the projects this involves regular team reviews feedback sessions um that sort of stuff and leaders should not be afraid to push back in the event of competing priorities that's what i've learned to say no for the tasks that i was not able to you know be finished um recently Yeah so there's so much that I learned from this course um I wanted to thank each and every one of my professors and especially to miss um uh, Katrina Kerr for who supported me throughout my journey at NEC thank you so much